Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about the new version of DxO Pure Raw that's just been released today and that is DxO Pure Raw 2. Pure Raw 2 adds two big new features to the software. The first is two brand new workflow options which make using the software that much easier and the second by popular demand is Fuji X-Trans support. But first, if you haven't seen Pure Raw before, let me give you a quick demonstration and explain to you what it is. So Pure Raw is basically DxO Labs raw pre-processing software. It basically takes the imaging engine from their PhotoLab software and gives you a way to use that imaging engine with your existing raw editing applications such as Lightroom, for example. So it lets you use their highly regarded optical correction modules as well as their deep prime um, denoising software, which actually uses AI at the demosaicing stage to give you a very effective denoising solution um, that works really well. But to give you a demonstration, let me just um, let me just take a file and process it and show you what happens. So I'm going to take this one here, um, and this is the application. And um, this side of it hasn't changed that much from the first version. So uh, let me just process this. So I'm not actually going to go through all the settings here, I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration and I'm going to process this now and I can now view the results. So this was now giving me a before and after and if I zoom right in, I'm not sure if you can see this in the video or not, but hopefully you can. Um, you can see there is a pretty dramatic difference between the two. So if you look at the grass down here, you can see it's significantly more detailed. And if you look up here in the background where the kind of out of focus areas are, you can see there's lots of noise in the original version and that is completely gone in the new version. In some respects, it's almost too clean, um, but you can actually, uh, what I find I do is I actually add a little bit of noise back into it. But okay, so that is just a quick demonstration of what Pure Raw does. You can then import your process DNG into Lightroom and continue to work with it as if it was a raw file. So that is the basics of what Pure Raw is. So what have they added in the new version? So the first thing is they've added two new workflows and the first of those is Finder integration on the Mac and Windows Explorer integration on a PC. So I don't have a PC here, so I'm just gonna use my Mac. And what that means is if I click on a raw file now, I can right click on it and if you see down here we have a bunch of settings or a bunch of options. So we have DxO Pure Raw 2, process with last use settings, process to DNG, and then we have HQ Prime or Deep Prime. So let me, in this case, I'm gonna use the process with last settings because I want to use the settings I had previously set. So this will fire up the Finder extension. Okay, so the first thing that you'll see that's coming up here is the optics module. So basically the optics module is DxO have profiled literally thousands of camera and lens combinations and that gives you a superior um, distortion correction as well as um, sharpness fall off for lenses um, vignette correction and so forth. Um, it's kind of what got DxO famous in the first place. So um, every time you launch this and it finds a new camera and lens combination that it hasn't used before, it will ask you to download the module. But once you download them once, you don't need to download them again. So I'm gonna hit download selection, then just go save, and it'll process it straight away. And what it will do is it will put it into this DxO folder. So this was a 36 megapixel image and that took about eight seconds. Okay, so here is our finished image. And I'm not gonna bother showing you before and after because um, again, it's hard to kind of see on a YouTube video, but that is basically the way of working in the Finder. So I, you can actually batch process images here. Uh, I can select a whole bunch of them and go process with last settings. And again, this will probably ask me to download the various um, lens combinations so I can just select download selection and it will download them and process the images. I'm not gonna do that now because I want to move along. So the next new workflow, and I'm sure everybody will be delighted about this, is Lightroom integration. So I'm gonna pop over to Lightroom. 
So we're here in Lightroom Classic and I have a bunch of images here. So now with Pure Raw 2, it will actually work as a plugin. So if I select an image here, let me just pick any of these images. So a nice little B shot here and I can go plugin extras, process with Pure Raw 2. And again, this brings me up my um, settings. So I'm just gonna to check to make sure everything's right. Um, I, I genuinely like to have the global lens sharpening turned off because I think it actually over sharpens the image. Um, but you can leave it on if you want. It will still sharpen it. It will just, just adds some extra sharpening on top of the basic sharpening and you end up with lots too much sharpening. So let me just process this. Okay, uh, this is an X-Trans image. So as you can see, we're also dealing with the second major feature here, which is Fuji X-Trans support. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that in more detail in a second, but let me just process this. Uh, as you can see, it takes a lot longer for X-Trans images, um, which is kind of a pain, but it does do a pretty good job. But uh, let me cut to this being complete. Okay, so it is finished and it imports it back into Lightroom. Um, and what you'll see is it actually adds to a collection down here. If I compare this to the raw file, again, I'm not sure you can see this on the video, but it's done a really good job with the conversion. I'm gonna zoom into 200% just because uh, on the YouTube video, you may actually have difficulty seeing this. Um, yeah, so if you look at the wings there, you can see it's retained quite a bit of definition. Um, there's not a lot of noise in the file to begin with, but you can maybe see it here compared to the, to the two. In terms of Fuji processing, uh, you got a very clean image. There's no worm artifacts or any other kind of loss of detail that you normally get with um, raw processing in Lightroom. But let me give you, uh, let me give you uh, just a couple of more demonstrations because there's um, some neat tricks that the Lightroom plugin will do as well. So, so say for example, you have an image that you've also already heavily edited. So here is a photo I shot. And if I pop over to the develop module, you can see I've done quite a bit to this. So like we have some curves going on here, we have a bit of dehaze, a bit of clarity, and so on. So if I look at the original file here, you can see that's how it was. So if I edit this with DxO, so again, we go to plugin extras. Okay, and again, I don't need to do anything because it's already downloaded the module because it's the case of here's one I did earlier. Okay, so I'm gonna process this. Um, this should be a bit quicker because it's not an X-Trans file. Okay, and it will import it back in. Okay, and so you can probably see what it did there. It re-imports all the settings. So because it's a DNG, it behaves more or less like a raw file, but it also keeps all of your Lightroom settings. Um, and you can still continue to edit as if um, as if it was the same raw file. Uh, one of the things it does as well, which is quite clever, is it actually, if we go down here, you can see because you're doing the sharpening and the noise reduction in pure raw, it's clever enough to turn them back off in Lightroom when it re-imports the file. So you can see here, this is really clean and fairly detailed. And this was a very noisy image to begin with. Um, but one more thing, let me just go back to my library here and go back to my little sample set of images. So if I go back over here to this one, so this is another Fuji file and I'm gonna zoom in here for a second. So I just wanna give you kind of a, another look at the, the quality of the Fuji processing with this. So um, this is one of those things that Lightroom's default processing can't really handle very well. Um, and you can see the images here, you've got a lot of smearing of detail. Again, I'm not sure how well this is gonna come up on the YouTube video, but I can zoom right in um, just to give you a, a better look at it. So normally what I would do is I would use Enhance in Lightroom to clean this, to convert it, um, and gives you a much better raw decode and that detail will be much more visible. But let me just show you what it's like with Pure Raw. So again, I've done some edits to this as well. So it will transfer the edits over also. 
Okay, so we have our settings. And again, if you want, you can turn this on. I just have this off because I don't like it. Um, but for if you want a really crisp image, you can turn that on. That's pretty much all we need to do to process this. So I have found that Fuji RAW files take about 25 seconds or so. Uh, I am on an M1 MacBook Pro. If you have like a, an M1 Pro or an M1 Max computer, or if you're lucky enough to get hold of the all new Mac Studio, uh, you would imagine this is considerably quicker. Um, for non Fuji files, it's about maybe half that time or even less, usually around 10 seconds. So again, you can see it's imported, it's reapplied all the edits. And if I zoom in now to 100%, give this a second to load, you can see we have much better definition in the trees here on the side. Um, compare this to the original. So again, you can see the substantial difference in the definition there. Um, is it better than enhanced with in Lightroom for Fuji files? In some respects it can be, and in other times it, it almost, like I said, like I keep saying with this, it comes across as almost too clean. But what I suggest you do is rather than trying to see these tiny little examples on the YouTube video is there's a trial version available um, or at least there will be a trial version available. So uh, try downloading it and try it yourself. And you can see how it looks with your own files and then judge for yourself whether you think it's better than some of the other methods or not. Okay, so that is pretty much it for Pure Raw 2. It should be available now. Um, like I said, there's a trial version and um, I have a blog post about it as well, which I will have links in the description below, as well as where to get the software. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I know it's been a while since I've had a YouTube video up and if you've made it all the way to the end, thank you so much. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you again soon.